Here's one over by the sanders. So if I want to use the sanders, I can just uh, start the rotary phase. Right? Sanders are ready to use. And when I'm done, I can shut the rotary phase off. So I like the multiple stations. I think they're kind of cool. Um, it just, it's a little more handy. I've seen some shops where they'll actually have one of those control stations at each machine. So it's extremely convenient. Okay, so the electrical room. Uh, the, Wod the Wadkin bench room does have uh, an electrical room and originally it wasn't designed with one uh, this was going to be the furnace room but I opted for a different plant so uh, let me show you how I've configured for three phase so in uh, well here let's take this up and get some close-ups so you know what I'm talking about so inside uh, this box is my rotary phase and uh, that's an insulated box with soundproof insulation okay and that's just a motor with a bunch of capacitors uh, you can buy these typically that's an old Cedarberg that I modified that did not have any automatic systems or controls and so, uh, a lot of them do now, uh, but back when I was looking, that was a pretty expensive proposition. Now, of course, all of this has been made with industrial garbage, which is still good. It's just most electrical contractors are not going to use used equipment because the banks won't accept used equipment. So what we have here is, uh, this is the single phase disconnect. It's, I'm bringing power from my, my sub panel to here. In this case, I've run wire uh, for 100 amps. I'm only feeding it with 60 amps currently. And because the salvaged wire was a three phase wire, I did bring the common back here. That's why the, the um, the, the uh, little white wire that'll give me uh, 110 in the box for my controls. Uh, at any rate, uh, that's what's feeding power to the system. So if I turn that on, I'll leave it off for now. That feeds my control box. Now these are the best types of control boxes. Uh, they're, they're gasketed sealed. Okay, so they keep dust out. Now what we go what we got going on here is probably a little more complicated than it's not as complicated as it looks. That's a number three rated for 90 amp magnetic starter, and it's a NEMA. I like NEMA, um, and it's got uh, a little auxiliary control. And these are all my control switch wiring throughout the shop, so they're running out to the shop. They're controlling this starter which basically all it does is once the signals are made it closes the contacts and feeds power from uh, my main service disconnect into this box back out and from there from there I go to a 240 a 240 volt bus box. Now these are pretty easy. They're just three connections. Um, you, you don't need, uh, for machinery, you don't need circuit breakers. Because the machinery is equipped with overload protection and, and uh, motor starters, they can be directly wired. Um, 
and in some cases just using disconnects. In fact, most factories you'll find just have a lot of disconnects. So it, it goes through that starter. Uh, the two lines go through that starter and liven up two bars, the red and the black, and that's my generated line. A generated line, uh, then, then the, the idler motor comes back and it hooks on to the red and black. And then from there comes out the blue, which I'm calling the generated leg from the idler. And what I've done with the generated leg from the idlers, I've actually fed it all the way back. You can see it coming up here. And it goes through that contact block. So when that contact block slows, no generating power on idling down can come into the system. It just, uh, I have the thing. I don't know if you need that. I just added that. Um, and then from there you can just hook on, go out and put plugs off of there. So that's your 220. Um, okay. And uh, then what we have here, that's for the 240 volt system. Uh, requires no uh, transforming of power. Now I also have 600 volts, so out of this bus box, the 240, I'm feeding a 600 volt rated disconnect, which is feeding a 9 kVA mo uh, transformer 600 to 240. Out of that transformer I'm feeding a fused disconnect to a 600 volt bus box and from here livening up three bars and we can feed 600 volts from here uh, up to nine horsepowers worth of machines and that's fused. I also run those to disconnects. Okay this is a this is a typical control station in the shop. I've got them. I can add them as many places as I want because I'm running from a three wire control on the magnetic starter in the electrical room. And from the bus boxes I run to a square D fuse disconnect. So this allows me to shut off circuits right at the machine. And this one's particularly set up for the peak gate and the mortiser. And uh, you know, it's fused. I got all my connections in there. Close it. That puts the power on. Now of course, the rotary phase is not running and so just to save me time I've got a start stop station here so if, if you uh, just let me shut the fan off if I want to uh, if I want to uh, you know, work on the PK, which is 600 volts. I just come over here, and you heard the rotary phase come on, and I'm ready to run on the PK. So, uh, you know, that's pretty nice, uh, right? I'm ready to just start the PK. The disconnect, uh, the disconnect also feeds uh, a plug behind there, 600 volts for the for the uh, for the mortiser, and uh, you know because the amp draws is, is is very little, you can just. Just make, ma'am. You can just make it out back there, right? Uh, very easy to add. Uh, that's how the shop is fed with uh, 600 volts. Out. So, um, what I've upgraded this winter, which is kind of fun, is Marty and Kingston. Um, 
gave me a bunch of stuff that he had built for um, that he had built for uh, uh, a dust collector to shut off. And uh, what he gave me was uh, he gave me this, 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 and this contactor block. Now originally my rotary phase just had a switch um, and that was wired to these two lines right there so I would come in uh, originally I had put one of these on a timer switch and there uh, I fried it in a year or two the contacts were just too small um, you can kind of see them there there they weren't robust enough and also um, when I shut down, um, what it didn't do is uh, throw in the start circuit or the start capacitors to bleed them out on rundown. So with Marty's I was able to manipulate the timer. Uh, I was able to configure it to uh, em uh, once signaled by this relay to count off and I've got it set for three seconds uh, and then it throws the start capacitor out with this and um, and then when you shut it down it throws them back in so that they can bleed on rundown and it runs a lot smoother um, but uh, thanks to Marty and Kingston uh, who of course buys the very best equipment and all of this stuff is square D it's fantastic uh, it's fantastic stuff so, I mean, um, let me show you how this works then. So, uh, so this, is a, this is a great size starter. Um, this is rated for uh, at 240. It's rated for 2 horsepower. Is that what? It, yes, it's rated for, actually, it's rated for 7.5 horsepower. So, this is a large contactor. That's... That's a pretty nice contactor, and uh, you know these are these are awesome equipment. I even got the uh, you know the the derail mounts and all the configurations. So um, so here I we have switches on the outside. Um, I have switches on the outside, and. Uh, well, the other thing I meant to mention is um, Matt Matt's been scouring the internet and found me these voltage amp readings that are uh, that are actually connected to each one of the legs and give me voltage balance readings and amperage draw on the lines. And uh, very inexpensive, uh, super kind of cool, unnecessary, but totally cool. Um, and so I got those installed, thanks to Matt Matt. Um, so, so here's the system. So we close this up. It's now fully automatic, as I showed you outside in the shop. And it's sealed, and we don't need to go in here. The only thing I might add is on that contactor that takes my start box and there's still two contacts left which I might use to operate a cooling fan on my idler and so it would only turn on when the idler is running um, and that would be fully automatic as well because um, I have 110 here I could just put a little fan in there uh, just to keep things running cool. Um, okay so uh, panel has lockout I put these in um, okay so you can't start it with that although I would do it so uh, so we turn it up so we juice it right and there there we go you heard the click now these are kind of cool these are the things Matt Matt gave me so those are uh, those are my voltages um, that's my wild leg. So those are my two lead legs. Uh, so Matt explained that the amps at 18 is not really a true reading. 
that's actually nine amps. So that's what's that's what the idler's drawing. And right now I'm reading a half um, 0.5 amps because that's the that's the um, the transformer. So the transformer takes a little bit and. Uh, if I actually disconnect the transformer, you can see I'm at zero. And when I put it back on, it takes about a half an amp. Um, so uh, that's really, really cool. I've got an indicator light. Um, at any rate, uh, that is the um, three-phase electrical room in the shop. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.